there's something that came up earlier and I just want to ask, cause you talk about these platonic ideals and you talk about beauty um, mm. and the people that study aesthetics their whole life, but don't actually experience beauty uh, mm. in its truest, oh. truest form. Right. Um, and what is that? <clears throat> I know that sounds like a strange question and I don't know if there's even a way to even come at this, but I think about this because it almost feels like when you're in the psychedelic experience, you are coming up against, I wouldn't call it an object because it doesn't feel like it's one thing. But when you stare at a tree or you're looking at a beautiful, I, I remember um, Aldous Huxley's Doors of Perception and he's just, I think he was describing looking at a uh, curtain, I believe it was. I can't remember exactly. It was a drapes. And he's describing the folds of the drapes and he was reminding, reminded of these really beautiful paintings and sculptures that did a great job of, of representing the folds of clothes, the folds of fabric. And he's like, why is this so captivating? Why is this so beautiful? What is it about this thing I'm looking at that is so entrancing? And I think he tried to explore yeah. that, but I mean, how, how deeply can you really go into that? I mean, it's, I mean, why is it that we see beauty and understand beauty? And this is where I think your, your argument about how rationality and materialism kind of fall short because I mean, maybe people could try to reduce it to evolutionary um, mechanisms, I guess, but it doesn't seem very satisfactory. Why we try to create art, why we try to create beauty. And I think that when someone creates a very beautiful piece of art, you're almost observing something that's been pulled out of the platonic realm, as it were, and mm. is there on display for all of us to see. It's almost as if you went... Uh, on a really intense DMT trip, and you brought back, as Terence McKenna described it, the you know the elves from the other realm. If you brought those one of those things back with you, and you're mm. like, here, this is a you know I brought this back from the DMT realm. Um, yeah. But there's no well, real language for it, right? Yeah, no, it's I mean it's massive uh, issue. But I mean, what <laughs> Whitehead said, the whole purpose really of un the universe was to attain aesthetic worth. Everything strives, that's the ultimate goal, that's to strive for aesthetic worth. And so in that structure, taking that um, psychedelics is sort of um, fulfilling the purpose of the universe, as it were. Um, I think, um, yeah, it's very interesting uh, talking about aesthetics in terms of uh, evolutionary theory, in terms of materialism, because there's no, although we can, you know, there, there are explanations of why we find um, people beautiful, you know, in terms of reproduction and, you know, good genes or whatever it may be. Um, that doesn't apply to like music, for example. There doesn't, there seems to be very, you'd have to make a very um, sort of convoluted argument to say that music has helped us evolve, you know, the appreciation of a symphony or harmony. Rhythm perhaps is slightly easier, but, you know, um, why we appreciate music itself can't be explained by evolutionary theory at, at the present stage. There have been attempts, but but but, but unsatisfactory in my view. Um, so again, this relates to, I think, panpsychism and uh, physicalism, if they're opposed. Karl Popper actually considered panpsychism as a, a type of physicalism, interestingly. But essentially it's this, that um, if you're a panpsych panpsychist, you believe in matter, but you just don't think that we understand fully what matter is. You know, we've only know the sort of shell of matter, but there's an intrinsic life to matter as well, which is mentality and value and beauty. The appreciation of beauty is um, an intuition of something which is extra physical, metaphysical, in other words. It just cannot be, we cannot describe beauty in terms of, um, uh, you know, extension and, and uh, measurements really in any way. I mean, okay, there's the golden ratio and so on. But fundamentally, there are so many aspects to beauty, like novelty even, that can't be described in material ways, that you think that um, a sort of an aesthetic intuition generally, as Plato said, is not an intuition of a particular object or painting or sculpture or whatever, but it's a sort of double perception. You're seeing the object, which is beautiful, but at the same time, you're intuiting that it's somewhat close to what Plato called you know, the form of beauty or the ideal of beauty, the idea of beauty, which the eidos which is the perfect, the ultimately perfect um, form that different particulars within our spatio-temporal reality sort of um, come, some of which come come close to. So, so, so interestingly, yeah, you're talking about what Huxley looking at, you know, everyday objects and, and, and perceiving more beauty in them. It's quite interesting because I think generally when we perceive things, 
um, due to evolutionary reasons, we sort of um, conceptualize things away, you know. So um, I see here, you know, microphone. And I don't look at the intricate design of the microphone, which obviously took someone a lot, lot of time, you know, mm -hmm. or cup, mm -hmm. cup of tea. And, um, but, but with psychedelics, um, it breaks down this everyday conceptualization of reality into practical um, slots, categories, as it were, and lets you see the object more fully. In other words, you sort of um, start focusing on it. Uh, you, 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 you notice things that normally your mind would ignore. And um, I think especially with, you know, like plants, for example, often there's a sort of um, a real kind of some, something more than mere beauty as well. Some kind of sort of, a, you know, intrinsic value is somehow mm -hmm. intuited in mm -hmm. it. At least that's the way it seems. Yeah. Um, so, so in that sense, I think that, um, you know, psychedelics are also known as hallucinogens. You know, in other words, they make you hallucinate. But in one sense, you could say that they don't make you, in certain cases like that, they don't make you hallucinate, but rather they open up your vision um, to what's really there. In other words, they wipe away your sort of uh, everyday human practical conceptualization of reality and allow you to see things afresh and um, allow you thereby, but thereby allow you to sort of perceive the beauty in things that otherwise you'd be blind to.